you're going to do is you're going to sit here with your hands ahead of you like this. Make sure your elbows don't go backwards. Okay, so your hands are, elbows are ahead of your body very slightly. Yeah, just not behind you is most important. So the palms go through this game briefly. Four bones in the palms here. You've got four bones within your palm and another one here, the fifth one, they're there. So these bones, you need to feel like they're opening, but not the, that's hyperextended. That's no good. I've now gone tense in the palm. Here, I relax it. In fact, I can even see on the screen when I do that, the skin goes white in the middle. I can even see that taking place. It's no good. So yes, I do need them open, but not so I go very white here, not, not too tense. And the only way that you can open these bones on your palms, really, I mean, I know we can do this with the fingers, but that's just the fingers. The only way we can do this with the palms is by softening inside, because there's, there's a bone, there's a bone, there's a bone, and there's a bone, yeah? Well, there are no muscles to pull those bones together, not in the same way as to fold your elbow, for example, there's a muscle going from here to here and another one from here to here. And all you do, you, you contract those muscles and that happens. So how do you undo a muscle? You have to undo it in your hands. Basically, stop being tense. That's, it's a really difficult thing to explain how to let go. Uh, and we all have problems relaxing under certain circumstances. But here, you need to just completely soften the middle of your palms. Feel like they're getting huge. Yeah, you know, they're guessing they're, they're widening. We need them to widen from left to right. Yeah. So you can't use muscles to do that because as soon as you try and make the palms wider, you try. You try and stretch your muscles, your palms open more. Well, you'll feel it's just going tense inside the palm. So that's no good. That's the equivalent of closing down the pipeline. So we need to just undo the palms. Okay, so your hands are here, and you're going to breathe in and out through the nose. As you breathe in, pull the hands slightly apart. As you breathe out, push them back together and again the same amount. So you're breathing in, and you're breathing out. Okay, so you just keep doing that. Palms are nice and relaxed and open. So just keep doing it. That's all you have to do. Okay, now whilst you do it, you imagine between your hands, you've got a very fine plastic. We have to have plastic. We can't have glass, really. We've got a very fine plastic ball, which stretches as you breathe in and out and contracts as you breathe out. So we're pulling a pass on the in-breath, we're contracting on the out-breath. So there between your two hands is this ball. Very, very fine, very, very transparent plastic. You know, it's flexible, super flexy plastic. And every time you breathe out, from the middle of your palms, you fill this ball, this plastic thing, you fill it with your energy. Now, I don't mind how you visualize your energy. It could be smoke, always works for me. Gas, steam, water, electricity, lights, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But every time that you breathe out, you push the hands together. And you imagine it swirling around inside that ball. So not too hurry. Take your time. No hurry here at all. And feel between your hands. So you can half close the eyes here. Nothing to see. Would you start to make the expansion and contraction of your hands a bit less? If you were doing three inches before, drop it to one inch.
and now drop it to about a centimeter. So you're hardly opening and closing the hands now. Now you don't have to worry about any special breathing here. Your focus is on the out breath, middle of your palms, filling this ball, this balloon, this whatever it is, filling it with your energy. Compacts it into this ball. Keep the palms nice and open, but soft. The softer you can get it, and the more open you can relax them into, the better. And now you're not moving their arms at all. When you breathe in, you're just keeping them still. When you breathe out, they're still. And as you breathe out, you fill the ball with whatever it is you're using. Smoke, steam, gas, water, fire, electricity, anything you like. Now start to focus, if you're not already, on the sensation in your palms and your hands and possibly your wrists, even maybe your forearms and elbows, but most likely the palms. You may have got a sort of buzzy feeling going on, tingling, expansive, a bit like they're a bit swollen. Just notice it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just notice it. Notice if that sensation runs down the insides of your wrists, maybe even the outside of your wrists. Okay, so what you're now going to do, keep going, just doing exactly what you're doing, but you're going to add something to it. As you breathe in, you're going to feel like you're trying to pull your hands apart, but you can't. They're tied together. As you breathe in, you feel like you're trying to expand the hands, but you can't. Now then, you do that, but also, as you breathe out, you feel like you're trying to press the hands together, but they can't move. Now, when you try and pull the hands apart on the in-breath or push them together, on the out breath, they're not moving, but it might feel as though there's something between your hands. When you pull them apart, if you ever made bread and you try and pull dough apart, you know, you try and stretch it out, you might get that sort of feeling. Or if you like, it's like two magnets trying to pull together and you're not letting them. When you push the hands together, it might feel as though those same two magnets this time are repelling each other. It's as though there's something between your hands. Maybe you've stretched the dough and then you press the dough back into a ball and it's so solid, it feels like you're squeezing into it somehow. Now, what we're doing is an exercise in feeling your own energy. So because we're focusing very firmly on the hands, our energy goes to our hands. And not all of it, obviously, but a considerable amount of it. So this ties in very much with what healers do, although healers use other forms of energy other than their own. Um, we're just using our own to feel what's going on. So if, say, you had a, a dodgy knee, then you could put your hands either side of the knee and do this exercise. 
and you would actually be supplying energy because it's between the hands, the knee would receive bonus energy, as it were. Um, when you do this with someone else, you know, you have your hands either side of their head, for example, they can feel a sense of something pressurizing the head. Or if you put it on the shoulders, you feel a lot of heat because you can do it. Once you've got the sensation, you can just rest your hands, turn them down and rest them on someone's shoulders or even off the shoulders. And people will feel a sense of heat coming out. So we're doing what used to be called, I don't know if it still is, but it used to be called bioenergetics. And it's about making your energy move to certain parts of your body. You can do it with one finger even. You just extend one finger and you focus on that finger and you can get the same results. The, fingers can, the finger, if it's just one sticking out, you know, and the rest, the rest of the hands are in fists, the finger can start to jump around and judder around. It's almost like it's got too much energy in it and it starts to shudder and to shake. So we're just doing a very simple bioenergetics, as I say, it used to be called, probably maybe still is, exercise. And if you've got a knee problem, if you've got a, you know, say you're, you've got a stomach problem, if you now go and put your hands here in front of your stomach, you could rest on or not. And you can carry on doing the same exercise where you breathe in. I'm going to exaggerate. You breathe in and you feel like you've done that, but you haven't. You've just left the hands there. And then breathing out, you feel like you pushed your hands back. And you can actually use it with your own energy to heal certain parts of your body. Just relax your hands, rub them together. Which is an interesting point about when you hurt yourself. Let's say you bash your elbow. You go, oh, like this. Well, what are you doing? You're actually getting more blood to flow to the area one, but also you're focusing on that area and you get more energy going to that area to, to heal yourself. So in effect, we, we use this technique all the time, but we just don't know we're doing it. You've got a headache, you know, you go, oh, and you rub your neck where the where it feels like it's a bit tense. You're doing the same thing. 